are making a fabulous project. The gold accent that we are adding to these earrings, it makes such an amazing difference. You certainly can do them in silver and they're beautiful and I've given many as gifts. The gold makes a huge difference. Before we get started, I like to oil everything that I'm going to be using. I'm going to oil my light bulb. I know, yes, it's a light bulb. We'll get to that. I'm going to oil my roller. I'm going to oil my work surface. I'm going to make sure my hands have oil. Just a little. You don't need a lot. Just a little, just so that nothing sticks and stays where you want it to stay until you really get going. We're going to take out the clay, condition it, put it down on the work surface. And the clay I would recommend using is a regular 650 and about the 25 gram package size will definitely yield a couple pair of earrings for you so you really get far. Rolling out to a three card thickness and then we're going to move it over to a two card thickness. I've got my texture sheet, two cards on either side. I'm going to roll that out. Those cards will really keep that nice and level and then I'm going to transfer it to my non-stick work surface. I'm going to flip that over so you can see that texture. And then I'm going to take my Fire Mountain clay cutters. I'm going to just push down on the clay, cut out my circle. And if it sticks in there, you just have to just kind of press it out. It won't hurt anything. And I'm going to take my smaller cutter, and then I'm going to make that curve that's at the top of the earrings. In there, so you can see that curve. I'll pull away the excess. And then I just need to add, at this point, the holes that we're going to use for stringing. I'm going to use the beading awl, put in a hole, and we're going to refine this later so it's not important that it's a big hole or that the holes are perfectly round. We're going to refine them later in the dry stage. This is just so you have a place to start. And then for the gold accent, I'm going to add a piece of clay that is smooth that I can apply the gold to later. I'm just going to Trim that up with the clay cutter, with the blade, and it, it could be any shape. It could be any shape that you want it to be. A friend of mine said this looks like a megaphone. <laughs> it really could be any shape you want. And I'm just going to trim it up. The most important part is that it fits on your earrings. I'm going to cut that up. And then I'm just going to transfer it over to the earrings. Now we're doing a wet to wet construction here. So this clay is really going to stick very easily, but we do need to apply water. Water will make the two of these seal together as if they are one. And you just want to flood that area with water using your paintbrush and just regular water and just paint that surface till they're sealed together. After you dry it, if you see that there's any gaps, you just want to Fill that in with some of your slip or your paste type clay. You really do want them to be bonded together, but because it's wet to wet, that most likely won't be necessary. Then you're just going to, this is the fun part. Well, it's all fun, but I think this is the funny part maybe. That's better. I'm just gonna put that on the light bulb. And I'm gonna, because it's oily, it's a little slippery, but because the clay is wet, it'll stay up there to dry. And I'm just gonna gently press down. The light bulb is gonna dome the clay so that you have a nice curved surface. We're going to let that dry and when it's dry it'll fall off <laughs> so then you know it's ready to go. We're going to take our dried piece and we're going to refine it. We're going to take the jeweler's files and clear out those holes and then we're also going to go around with the salon board just to get all those edges. And then here's the jeweler's file we're just going to go into those holes. You can use any of the shapes, the round. This is a triangle. It'll just clean out those holes. See how that clay comes out of there? And you want to make sure the hole is big enough so that after it fires and the clay shrinks, that hole still exists. So you do want to make it a little bit big. And, but and most importantly, keep it away from the edges so that as the clay shrinks, it's not too close to the edge that you don't have much metal to work with. Because these are earrings, that's not as crucial, but that is an important part to keep in mind. Once it's dry, time to fire. All right, put on the glasses, and we're going to fire up that torch. And we're going to fire this on a piece of fiber blanket. I've broken this off a larger piece of fiber blanket, but you do want to use caution when doing that. It is a fiberglass-like material, so wear a mask 
and safety glasses. The fibers are really large, it's not a problem, but just use some caution. The fiber blanket is there to help maintain that dome shape because as the piece heats up, it will want to flatten out. And we're just gonna heat that up for two and a half minutes. Once the piece is fired, we're gonna let it cool. You want it to be completely cool. And we're gonna apply the gold paste. The gold paste gets put on with a paintbrush, which I do keep separate for just for the gold. Take the, the paste, get it onto our brush, and we're just going to apply it onto that area that we created, that smooth surface that we created. We want a nice thin layer to start. Cover up that whole area. And then we're gonna let it dry and we'll go back and apply a second layer. We'll do about three thin layers, and then once that's all done and dried, I'd like to go in with a little bit of water along the edges to then clean up the excess gold that doesn't need to be in there. I'll clean your brush off, put that aside, and then once it's dry and you have your three layers, we're gonna fire the gold part. So we'll put the glasses on again, and we're gonna fire the gold. Now I have found in making these earrings that I do need to do two gold application, so I'll come in here and I'll start heating up my gold. And once the gold gets up to temperature and the binder burns off, you know you're getting there. We wanna get the earrings up to that salmon-y color again and hold it for seven minutes. Yes, yeah, seven minutes. It is an exercise in patience, believe me, or at least for me, the multitasker who needs to always be working, always doing something to stand there for seven minutes and fire these so that everything centers and gets together. You want that gold to really adhere to that silver. And you're gonna hold that, for, see how nice and glowing that's getting? You're gonna hold that for seven minutes. Once that's done, we're gonna burnish it. And if for any reason you don't, you're not happy with the gold, we'll heat it with the torch and then we'll reapply the gold and do this process again. And yes, that means another seven minutes. I know, it's worth it, it is so worth it. Okay, so now that we've got the gold fired, we're gonna burnish it. So we'll start with our wire brush, and I do like to be a little careful around the gold area. You can hit it with the wire brush, but I don't recommend going really firmly with the wire brush. I haven't had any problems with it, but I just wanna caution you just to be a little more, more careful. So I'm just gonna go across the area, focusing on the silver, using the wire brush, and then, Oh, what do you see? Then I'm gonna take the agate burnisher and go over the gold. And we're just gonna press down small strokes. You don't wanna to leave too many impressions from the burnisher. You just wanna go in nice gentle circles. I am applying pressure and you can see like the gold just starts to come up to shine. And then from here you can use the jeweler's paste. There's lots of other methods that you can use to, to bring up that gold, but I really just stick with the agate burnisher. It does such a beautiful job and you go around all the edges where there's gold and you bring it up to that really shiny luster. As you can see, in our ready to be assembled pieces, we have our, we have our earrings ready to go with gold. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? And then I like to, just as another handmade addition to these, I like to take just plain 20 gauge sterling silver wire and create a figure eight. That's what I'm gonna to use to string into my holes for my, that I made earlier in my earrings. I'm just gonna make a simple loop. And then I'm gonna go back and make a, a larger simple loop right below that. So I've made a, a figure eight. And right where the wires cross, I'm going to take my wire cutters and I'm gonna have my flush end, the flat side facing the part that I'm keeping. So that as it cuts away, it leaves me a flush end so it's nice and smooth. So I have my figure eights, and then I will just link that through the hole in the earring. We're gonna put that through the hole, close that up, and then on the other side of the figure eight is where you add your chain, and then to the chain we add the ear wires. We can see that in the finished pieces See how that gold really just pops those earrings? And look at how the gold accents all of those other pieces. It really just makes such a difference in the finished work. Don't be afraid to add gold to any of your designs.